video in the um, train simulator series and another let's drive as you can see from the uh, screen in front of you we finally made it onto the um, western uh, main line and to my hometown of Oxford um, today we're going to be driving a class 166 between Oxford and uh, London Paddington it's an early morning start just before five o'clock um, for this video though we're just going to drive the section between Oxford and Didcot Parkway uh, calling at um, Radley on the way to pick up some commuters from there so without further ado let's head off from and into um, Oxford station let's just set the train up need to put the headlights on Let's head on in. As I leave here, the actual speed limit's only 15 miles an hour, so I shall accelerate relatively gently. And I do need to be careful that I don't go over the 15, which is relatively easy. Um, when I compare this to the um, previous loco that I uh, was driving, um, the controls are less easy to know exactly which power setting you're in and as such sometimes you think you're in uh, neutral but actually you're still accelerating as we saw there so heading up into the onto the um, line and now we can see Oxford station directly in front of us. The um, version that I've, I'm running is the uh, Just Trains um, Western Mainline version. Um, it's uh, supposed to have the updates particularly around Reading station but it clearly hasn't updated Oxford station because uh, the on the left hand side as we're looking at it now there are now two platforms there rather than the one little bay there are now two bays in there and they are now marked platform one and two and indeed the um, platform we're heading in on which is marked platform one here is actually now platform three i don't know whether when you get the um, oxford to vista village extension whether it will amend that to represent as it is currently looking start my braking just as we go um, under this overbridge and hope to stop just the other side of the main entrance which is where these uh, lights are Shall I open the door? We do actually have a little bit of a, a wait here at Oxford. Um, so while we're doing that, what I will do is um, just quickly talk about the uh, locomotive or the um, our traction for today. We've got a we're driving a Class 166 uh, Turbo Express, which is a diesel multiple unit. Um, these were built by. Um, ABB at York between 1992 and 1993 and were intended to replace some of the earlier um, diesel multiple units such as the class 121. Um, it's a variant of the um, class 165 so it's an updated version um, although when you look at the two it's, it's relatively difficult to tell the difference. We'll just let this uh, it's a class 57 go through. Being closely um, linked to the class 165, um, it's part of the uh, turbo or network turbo family of trains. Uh, there were 21 um, train sets built as a maximum speed of 90 miles per hour, um, and each of the engines can output 350 brake horsepower. So, um, one of the things I have found with this particular um, 
diesel multiple unit as opposed to the class 172 that we have been driving is that the acceleration if you put it straight into full power it tends to not accelerate um, particularly well so here we are at Oxford Station the city of dream inspires this big university town and this is where I catch my um, that normally a, a 165 or a, or a class 166 um, on my daily commute into uh, Reading and we saw a container freight train just go past us there a class 57 I believe was um, pulling it or class 56 sorry I think was pulling it um, of course these are now replaced by class 66 and occasionally a class 70 and then dip, indeed much of the freight um, that comes through is also um, a zebra container or um, new cars uh, so a car transport what I should do now is we will um, pause the video while we're waiting for the rest of the passengers to get on um, and then I'll be back um, as soon as we get the uh, permission to close the doors. Well as you can see we've got the permission to um, to exit, doors are closed so off we go. As we leave Oxford it's a maximum speed limit of 25. Um, as I said it does take a little while to um, get up to any speed this uh, particular loco so what I tend to do is to make is to leave it in the low power settings whether it's just my imagination but it does appear to accelerate faster if you don't put it straight into full power. Either way, I do need to make sure that I'm ready to um, bring it back into neutral and coast once we hit 25. As we cross over onto the up main, um, the speed limit does increase to 75 just there and I can begin to accelerate just as I reach the end of these um, bushes on the left hand side where I can start to see the houses. We're now in full power, accelerating up. speed limit does increase up to um, 90 just after this overbridge. Just before this overbridge I can begin to accelerate um, when I reach the lights on the left hand side. It doesn't really matter though because we're not in 75 yet anyway. The next um, main landmark here is Hinksy Yard which is on the right hand side as we come up. We'll see it very shortly. Um, interestingly enough on the left hand side as we pass Hinksy Yard um, is Hinksy Lake, um, which now has a swimming pool attached to it, and has a pleasure lake. But in fact, the lake was formed when the when Brunel was building the railway, and he had to um, just let this um, other one six six go past. So on the left hand side would be Hinksy Lake, and as I said, he um, when Brunel was building the line into Oxford, the extension of the line, he needed to raise the line um, above the floodplain, and he actually dug the gravel for this. Um, out of the pit on the left hand side which then filled with water um, so that's how Hinksy Lake was formed. Um, normally in the morning on the in Hinksy Yard we have uh, uh, normally a couple of one of class um, 66s and occasionally some class 70s in there. Um, the local shunter class 08 in there is um, uh, has been static for some time although I think recently I've just noticed that they may have replaced it although I've managed to clock a new number so I shall have to wait and see. Some movement up here on the right hand side, so I better just give them a, let them know. As we go under this next um, overbridge, we have about four miles to go to Radley.
Bradley is in fact a uh, fairly small, smallish town, large village, uh, but it has a station mainly because um, I think it also is very, very close to Abingdon, which is a fairly much larger town. Uh, Abingdon used to have a station, but unfortunately that was closed. The line will branch, the line on the left hand side will branch to the left very shortly. Um, that takes around to um, just here we can see it branching, that takes it round to um, Cowley Works and into um, the BMW home of the Mini. Um, they are thinking about um, reopening that particular line. Um, and taking and having another couple of stations, one at um, the Oxford Science Park and I believe one at the Kazam Football Stadium home of Oxford United. What I'm looking for now is a COPS the left hand side where it joins the line and um, we've then got approximately one and a half miles to go to Bradley. You'll see what I mean by a fairly large cop so it comes down and meets the line. In fact this is it just here. So when we reach this small cops on the left hand side it's um one and a half miles to go to Bradley. And at the next signal there's one mile to go and I need to start preparing to um, break for Bradley Station. It's quite difficult to judge the break-in for here. What I tend to do is, um, here's the signal, what I tend to do is wait until I meet the hedge on the right hand side and then it's somewhere between step three and step two breaking all the way in. I think I'm coming down fast enough that I will um, reduce the braking. I'm going to just reduce it slightly. Bradley Station is just the other side of this um, overbridge that you can see coming up. Go back up to step three. Back down to step two. I think we should be closing in on time. As you can see here is Radley Station, I may be slowing down just a little bit too much. I aim to stop fairly close to the end of um, the platform. Uh, this, interestingly enough, the scenario here is supposed to be set in um, a summer morning, hence the almost daylight. Just open the doors. And yet there are two houses on the right hand side, or three houses that have their coal fires burning full of blast at this stage of the morning. So um, either it's a very cold early summer morning, or um, they all like to waste fuel. As we leave Radley it's a 90 mile an hour speed limit so we can begin accelerating straight away. As I say, Radley is very close to um, Abingdon Town. Okay, we'll just start pulling away. Um, Abingdon used to have a station, so you used to have a little branch line running off from here to Abingdon. That closed some time ago there. On the left hand side you can see a floating sign. Bradley was, in, was indeed the first um, station as you leave between Oxford and Dinker. There are another two stations, the next one being Cullum and then followed by um, Appleford. Both of those will um, be going straight through.
what I'm looking out for now is um, the pylons that are currently running to the left of us will um, shortly be crossing over the line and where they do cross over we have four miles to go to um, Dick Park Station. Of course Dick, Dick Parkway um, is one of the major junctions on the Western Main Line and where the line from London Paddington splits going down to the West Country, down towards um, Bristol and um, further west and into South Wales and then down into um, sort of Devon way and the line that then runs for the one that we're going along in towards Oxford, Birmingham, uh, Worcester and sort of Hereford way so um, so Dick is a fairly large sta um, station considering the, the size of the, of the um, town Dinka is also the home of the Great Western Society. Uh, it's modelled in here, we won't see it today I don't think because it's on the left hand side and it's very difficult to see from the cab view. The pylons are now crossing over us so we have about um, four miles to go to Dinka and we're just coming up on Cullum. as you go through the station but um, I like the sound of it so why not so the next station after this is um, Appleford um, and I must admit I've always liked the name Appleford it always, no, I've never been to the Appleford village Swindon and the West Coast. Right. 
to the right hand side of SSD power station, I sadly didn't think it would also lies or dismantle the um, old coal fire section of the Dickon power station and that oil fired. Dickon yard on the left hand side and beyond that is the home of the Great Western Railway Society. It's also good to visit what is in this area. it for um, part one of this video. What I will do is um, in the next video we'll continue on between here and um, Reading Station. I hope you enjoyed the um, short trip between Oxford and um, Didcot and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget if you enjoyed the videos please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you next time.